today we are fulfilling yet another childhood dream of mine. Just checking them off the list at this point. <laughs> when I was around 13 or 14, I was walking around the library, not really looking for anything in particular, when I ended up picking up one of those like big comprehensive books of Greek and Roman mythology. And while I loved many of the stories in that book, there was one in particular that would uh, become a quintal, quintal? <laughs> a quintessential part of what makes me me. And that is the story of Persephone and Hades. <laughs> to this day, I still have a hard time really explaining why I love this story so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recommend another video to you guys, which is a Princess Weeks video on Persephone. It is one of my favorite videos on the internet. Princess Weeks does such a better job than I could ever do explaining why many of us love this story. And in particular, Persephone herself. And then several weeks ago, I received a comment from one of my lovely subscribers. Thank you so much. And uh, they wanted me to recreate one of Persephone's outfits from Lore Olympus. If you don't know, Lore Olympus is a webcomic and now graphic novels. I actually own one. It's at the top of my closet though. And I just, I, yeah, I don't want to get out the ladder, <laughs> which is a like modern ish kind of retelling of Persephone and Hades. The art in and of itself is just gorgeous. It's the reason I recommend it to people. I am way behind by about a year and a half, but of what I've read, I really enjoy it. While I will definitely be taking inspiration from Persephone's outfits in Lore Olympus, I will also be taking inspiration from other places, such as fashion during the Greek and Roman Empire itself, as well as the Regency and Edwardian eras. I'm just, it's a cornucopia of inspiration here. If there's ever anything you would like for me to try to recreate or be inspired by, whether that be a movie, TV show, book, a painting, um, or even like a dupe of fast fashion, make sure to comment down below. I could end up doing it. Also, I forgot to say this the first time I talked about this. If you would like to remain anonymous uh, on the video because I will be posting your profile picture and username, uh, be sure to tell me and I will not put those things on the screen. If I do end up using your idea, that is. I didn't say that the first time, my bad. <laughs> I've been doing a weekly video for the past few weeks and I have two more before we're done with the weekly videos. And so this is your weekly reminder to subscribe if you have it. It really helps me out and it makes sure that I can keep creating free content for you guys. So. So thank you very much. So now we're gonna go on to the big points of research and inspiration as well as getting on to my final design. Let's go. So of course, my first source of inspiration is the clothing worn during the Greek and Roman empires. The three main types of clothing worn by women were basically different versions of tunics called a keton, peplos, or stola. Keton and peplos were Greek and stola was Roman, if you were wondering. I really wanted to go off of the layered effect I see in these research examples, as well as the look of the pinned sleeves, which I think is just gorgeous. So what I did was give my sleeves a wrapped design to kind of give an homage to this look. The second thing I was inspired by was of course Persephone and Lore Olympus. Not only was I inspired by the more historical looking outfits she wears, especially this double skirt you see here, but also her color scheme. Persephone tends to stick to the colors of this magenta that seems to be a perfect mix of purple and pink, white and green. Basically the ultimate colors of spring. I wanted to incorporate this color scheme into my design. Now the duvet that I'm going to use as my fabric lends much more towards purple than pink, but lavender is a favorite color of mine, so I still think this works. Works. and I have some embroidered white flowers and green trim to bring out more of those other colors. Lastly, some secondary inspiration comes from Edwardian and a little bit of Regency fashion. Regency of course makes sense with the neoclassical art movement. Aesthetics from the Greek and Roman empires could be seen from everything from architecture to paintings to fashion. But what I was getting super inspired by was the shorter overskirt versus longer underskirt from the Edwardian period. This looks so Greek goddess to me. In fact, these were some of the first research photos that really started to cement my design for this dress. And then I remember that earlier picture from Laura Olympus and just knew it was meant to be. So here's the final design, a light purple dress, which color is inspired by Laura Olympus with a drapey bodice and wrap sleeves to give that simple draped look from the Greek and Roman empires and a shirt waist. So while my waist will be defined, it will also be quite simple to fit over my head without a closure and the shorter curved over skirt inspired by the Edwardian skirts. And once again, Laura Olympus. Okay, let's get to sewing. Mm -hmm. 
So for this design, I'm mixing three different patterns to get the look I want. First was the Luna jumpsuit from the free patterns on Mood, also called the Oliver jumpsuit on the main menu for some reason, which has this nice drape effect at the neckline, but since it is a jumpsuit, I'm only using the bodice pieces. And I went a couple of sizes up to make sure I can fit it over my body without any type of closure. Next is my largest sleeve pattern, which is from the Sophie dress pattern I bought on Etsy. Since this will be wide enough at the top to wrap around the shoulder area, and lastly is my A-line skirt pattern that I use for basically everything. I started by using the pillowcase for my back bodice, and since the duvet and pillowcase is double-sided, I just cut the back and front bodice pieces out on both layers, since I was a bit scared that the top decorative layer would be a bit see-through. For the front piece, I tried my best to center one of those pretty florets in the middle of the bodice. For the rest of the dress, I separated the basic back fabric from the more decorative front fabric to ensure that I had enough yardage, which I still didn't, but this at least made it better. I then used the bottom fabric for the underskirt, having to shorten it a bit to get my five to six pieces in. With the decorative top fabric, I cut out my sleeves first, which had been halved and shortened to about an elbow length. And lastly, I shortened the skirt pattern even more and did another five pieces for the overskirt on the top decorative fabric as well. All right, here's the plan. We have our ribbon slash trim. We have, whoops, the one fell on the floor. We have my embroidery panels for the front of the dress. Do you wanna smell? Oh good, Ollie, seal of approval. I have my fabric pile. <laughs> Um, bye Ali. I'm gonna put the front and back together, which each has two layers to them. The back is already done because I kept that top seam, but I have to stitch the like lining layer to the outer layer on the front panel. Yeah, we'll start figuring out fit today and maybe get to shirring. I think I want the sleeves to go on. For, do I want the sleeves to go on? Maybe I wanna do shirring first because I don't want the sleeves to get in the way. I don't know, we'll get there when we get there, but it is finally time to start sewing. Let's go. So for the front bodice, I quickly stitched right side to right side and flipped it right back out again, which was actually really nice because I didn't have to worry about how to finish my neckline. It already looked perfectly finished. After I stitched the front and back bodice together, I started marking where my shirring would start, which would be directly under the bust. So for shirring, you're going to keep your regular thread on the needle part of the machine, but you're going to hand wind the bobbin with elastic thread. Since if you tried to do it with the bobbin winder on the machine, it would break from being stretched too much. Also, just FYI, you also don't wanna stretch it too much when you're hand winding it. Then once I've marked my first line with a ruler to make sure it's even all the way around my waist, I simply just started stitching. I tend to make my spaces between my rows anywhere from a quarter inch to a half inch, but I've also experimented with larger patterns of space in between. It just depends on the look you want, and I wanted the entire area to look fitted.
Once the waist was done, I went ahead and added shirring to the rest of the back piece since I just thought it looked strange to leave it as is. then attached the sleeves, which I thought looked pretty good, I just wanted to flip the way it was wrapped at the top. And it was at that point in the project where I was just second guessing everything and wondering if I even liked what I was making, but I know this happens at some point in basically every project, so I just moved on to the other sleeve and fixing the first sleeve. I then started on the skirt, or should I say skirts. I'm sure some of you are tired of hearing this by now, but I did the elastic trick for a much faster gathering process and repeated the steps for the outer skirt, except I left one seam open for center front. Next, I started to add the trim to the sleeves. At this point, I wasn't quite sure where all the trim would go, but I knew the sleeves were a definite. I wanted to see what the curved little hem would look like, and I think it looks really cool. I think I'm just gonna have it come down to that longest length at the back. Um, and then, because the dress is shorter, it doesn't quite serve the same look as like my research, but I think it gets that point across, so I'm happy with it. Um, second thing I wanted to quickly talk about is I think, I think compared to everything else, am I still in frame if I do that? Yes. I think compared to everything else, this might be a little too vibrant. I don't know. Now that I'm looking at it all together, do I like it? Is it too much? Wait, when I just had the top on, it looked like too much, but now I kind of like it. Okay, I'm still undecided. <laughs> all right, I'm currently pinning and I'm gonna start sewing this trim on the sleeves here. So for the overskirt, I took those pins I put in and marked a generally nice looking curve to cut and just copied that on the other side. Then it was time to put the skirts and the bodice together.
I hemmed both the skirts, and since I couldn't decide if I wanted the trim on the underskirt or the overskirt, I just put them on both. <laughs> and with that, it is time to show you the final result. You don't think there's gonna be poison ivy in there? No, just do it. Okay. Let's turn these on. Let's make it magical in here. Ah, yes. That is it. I think this is really, really cute. The fabric is also so comfy. That's the thing about making things out of sheets and duvets and just like bed things is it's very comfortable. <laughs> I think I would have regretted putting that little white flower. I think they might have been lilies. No, daisies? I don't know what they were. On the dress. I just think that would have been a little bit too much. Again, I'm trying to make this a little bit wearable for like day to day and I think that just would have been like a little bit too far. I love the two layers of skirt. I think it just makes it like unique and different but it gives a little bit more volume. It did have to come at the cost, however, of some length. <laughs> so I added the skirt from my last sewing video. And if you haven't seen that one, go check it out. I make this little cute petticoat over there. So look out for part two of this in October, hopefully around Halloween. I'm gonna make a ruler of the underworld version of Persephone. This is the springtime. It's gonna be like Halloween when she returns to the underworld. So we're gonna have a ruler of the underworld version. That's it for this one. Very happy, feel very cute. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I hope to see you back here next time. Bye.